Uh, it's really excited to be here. You know, um, I started using Linux when I was uh, in, in after graduation in 2003, and it's really cool to be here to talk about RISC-V. So I'm, today I'm going to give you some insight about the, the chip design economics, because as being software people, it's sometimes really hard to grasp how bad the hardware industry is. So I'm going to you know, do a bit of a rant about that. And then talk about why that doesn't work for the future. And then talk about how RISC-V is revolutionizing the hardware industry. So let's dive right into it. Uh, can you put the slides on, please? Yes, thank you. So I'm truly amazed how fast the IoT edge computing machine learning field is changing. As a matter of fact, to support the computing needs of these growing markets, we must customize not only the software, but also the hardware as well. Because general purpose hardware or chips will not deliver the performance that you need for these growing applications. So the alternative future that I kind of envision is that there's going to be lots and lots of different custom chips rather than having just a couple high volume general purpose chips. However, the current chip design economics are not meant for building lots of custom chips. They're really geared towards building general purpose high volume chips. So what does that even mean? So look at the graph on the right. It is known that to build a modern chip microprocessor in a 28 nanometer process technology node, it will take more than 100 millions of dollars. And that's why less and less, and pe less, and less people can actually afford building these chips. And it takes a long time to actually, actually put your product to market. So we talked about deploying in a week. It's earth-shattering hardware to build a chip in 18 months. That's, that's considered earth-shattering. So to really make that formula work, what people do is spend a lot of money and have to sell a lot of those chips to make the economics work. And obviously, as you can see, that doesn't really work well for custom chips because just in, inherently, you're not going to sell that many, that, that many volumes of those chips because you know, you're going to build your custom chip for, for just your application. You might have small volume. You might have medium volume. So, so in order to really change the chip design economics to work for building lots and lots of different custom chips, I'm proposing that the hardware industry needs to copy the, the success of the software industry. So to make my point a bit more dramatic, I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. How did Instagram turn into a billion dollar company with only 13 employees? Do you get that? That's about $80 million worth of value per, per engineer. Conversely, have you ever heard of a billion dollar hardware chip company with 13 employees? Probably not. So let's think about why. By answering why, I can hopefully give you some intuition on how we ought to change the hardware industry. So I got the tech stack of Instagram. As a matter of fact, I Googled it. People share these tech stacks in the software world. It's kind of you know, not heard of in the hardware industry. So there's two things why I think Instagram worked with 13 employees to build a billion dollars worth of value. First, they use a bunch of open source technology, as you can see here. That means that they put the 13 engineers working on the Instagram stack not on building the, the ground up technology and reinventing the wheel like operating systems and compilers. They put those 13 engineers to work on the part that mattered to them, the value added part, which in this case, it was the application logic to, to take photos and share them. And married that with the cloud infrastructure, the easy to use cloud infrastructure such as Amazon Web Services, Route 53, CloudFront, S3, obviously something like Google Cloud as well, but you know, to deploy their application at scale, to touch millions of users, and to test out whether they had a market product fit. So compare that to a typical hardware chip company's tech stack. Can you think of any open source technology? Can you think of any kind of cloud infrastructure to deploy the hardware technologies at scale? In this case, that means to build a chip. Anything? Emacs. Oh, yes, Emacs is very important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to build chips, yes, AutoVerilog and all that. So I'm here to report that we've been making a lot of progress here. 
So there's RISC V. It's a free and open instruction set architecture, which I'll talk about. Also, companies like NVIDIA have started to open source their hardware technology. So they recently open sourced DLA, the Deep Learning Accelerator. It's an inference engine. And today, I'm going to talk about Sci-5 Cloud Services, which is a cloud infrastructure to deploy your hardware technology at scale. In this case, we are going to help you build your own custom chip very fast at an affordable price. So what is RISC-V? I, I'm, I'm compelled to ask how many people know RISC-V. Wow, OK. Great. So RISC-V is a high-quality, license-free, royalty-free instruction set architecture. So Professor Dave Patterson at Berkeley has started four RISC projects in the 1980s. You can see all the chips on the below, RISC-1, RISC-2, RISC-3, RISC-4. RISC-V is a fifth-generation RISC design from UC Berkeley. I started the RISC-V project when I was a grad student at Berkeley in 2010, alongside my colleague and friend, Andrew Waterman, and our advisors, Chris Osanovich and Dave Patterson. RISC-V is appropriate for all levels of computing. That means from your smallest microcontrollers to your embedded Linux device, all the way to the supercomputer HPC machines. RISC-V is experiencing a rapid uptake in both industry and academia. And it is supported by a growing software ecosystem. So RISC-V support for GCC, Binutils, Mulib, glibc, Zephyr, Linux, FreeBSD has all been upstream, thanks to your support. And we started a nonprofit RISC-V foundation to maintain the standard. And now we are at more than 100 members. So if you see your company's logo here, thank you very much for your support. If your company logo is not here, well, you're missing out big time. So I go back and I kind of talk about, you know, to join the RISC-V Foundation to see what's going on. So thank you for your support. A quick note on NVIDIA's effort to open source their machine learning inference engine. So you see Jensen Huang, uh, CEO of NVIDIA, at the stage at last year's GTC. is proudly announcing the Xavier DLA um, that it's going to be open source. This DLA engine actually has been taped out in one of the Tegra chips that NVIDIA built. So you know, what is DLA? It's a deep learning inference accelerator for IoT markets. It's scalable, highly configurable, and it supports a wide range of IoT devices. So kudos to NVIDIA. Thanks for doing this. And I would love to see more companies joining the open source hardware revolution. So I'm going to switch gears and talk a little bit about the Sci-5's chip design services. So. In order to really deploy your hardware idea at scale, you need to put that in a piece of silicon or a chip and have that, have that built. So what is Sci-5 Chip Design Services? It's a cloud infrastructure to change the chip design experience to, to replicate that in a form of a website click or an API calls, just like how you would bring up your virtual data center today. You would not go buy machines. You would not go buy networking gear. Just sit and call some APIs to call your own virtual data center. So similar to that, we are building this cloud infrastructure to support chip building. So how does it work? So you log into the website on the, on the upper right, and then you pick a template for your chip. So today, we have two templates for building your own chip. The first template is called Freedom Everywhere. It's a low-power 32-bit microcontroller. It's manufactured in TSMC 180 nanometer, and it's good for IoT applications. The second template is called Freedom Unleashed. It's a high-performance 64-bit multi-core platform. It's manufactured in TSMC 28 nanometer, so it supports your coherent accelerators. And we have already onboard all the important peripherals, such as PCIe, DDR, and gigabit Ethernet. So the idea is that you don't need to work on onboarding all these important IPs onto the platform. We've already done the work to do that. So I envision that this platform will be good for embedded Linux applications. So after you selected these templates, then you can go on to a marketplace where all the third-party IPs have already been onboarded to our project templates. So today, we have IPs from Rambus, Ultrasoc, FlexLogic, eMemory, AnalogBits, and ThinkSilicon. And they've already been onboarded onto our platform. So they will be available on the website. And on top of that, you can go and onboard additional open source hardware IPs, as well as your, your piece that matters to you, your customer IP, which is the value added piece that you build. And then after a couple web, you know, uh, clicks away from the website or API calls away, then you'll get your own custom chip. 
billions of them just for your need. So in other words, we're trying to change the chip design experience into something like ordering pizza online. Actually, you go to dominoes.com, you put in your address, and then you pick a store, and then it turns out you can start building a pizza from scratch, or there's the so-called specialty pizzas, which in my opinion, there are templated designs for your pizza. And then after that, you pick your toppings, and then you click the order button. You don't talk to, you don't talk to people, and you get this progress bar. It says, you know, preparation, baking, boxing, and then delivering. So think of that chip design will be something like that. The only difference is that chips will be a bit more expensive than pizza. So okay, let's dive in. Uh, let's look at the Freedom Everywhere platform. It's a 32-bit low-power microcontroller platform. On the left, you can see the block diagram of the platform. At the heart, there is the Sci-5 E31 CPU, which runs at 320 megahertz. We support multiple power domains so that we, you can have your low-power standby mode. And the platform will also accept a wide range of clock inputs. So to demonstrate the platform, we've actually taken the platform ourselves and we taped it out on TSMC 180 nanometer, and that's the chip on, on, on your right. That's the Freedom Everywhere 310 or the FE 310 chip manufactured in TSMC 180 nanometer, and it's, it has a QFN 48 um, package. So the idea is that take the platform, look at it, and add or subtract the features that you need or you don't need. And also, you can come with your own, app, own, own piece of the hardware. Just, put, just plop that in and tell us a couple uh, button clicks away, and you get your own microcontroller just, for, just built for your application. So a quick performance and power comparison for the FE310 chip. So we took three additional microcontrollers that were built in the same process technology node, TSMC 180 nanometer, and we did the comparison. So if you look at the Intel Curie model, module, um, it runs the top speed of the CPU is 32 megahertz. And all the other ARM Cortex-based uh, microcontrollers have a top speed of 48 or 16 nanometer, uh, 16 megahertz. Compare that to our FE310 chip, which runs at a maximum speed of 320 megahertz. So we are 10x faster than Intel and 11x more performance than ARM. And you all, we also measured the power. It's uh, 9x more power efficient than Intel and 2x more power efficient than ARM. So it's a pretty good platform. So we also put together HiFi One and Arduino, Arduino compatible VersiFi development board, which has our FE310 chip here. We've sold 1,000 copies to more than 45 countries today. If you want your own, you can go to crowdsupply.com. Um, it's $59. You can order it right away today. So jumping onto the second template, which is the Freedom Unleashed template, which is a 64-bit multi-core versified Linux platform, if you look at the block diagram, on the left, you can see at the heart that there's the U54 MC Sci-5 CPU, which runs at more, you know, 1.5 gigahertz. It has four application cores, which are Linux capable, and one embedded core for housekeeping of the, uh, of the, of the chip. We also have a chip-to-chip -chip coherent link coming out of the, coming out of the platform, which, which we call ChipLink. The platform also has DDR3 and 4, uh, gigabit Ethernet, and a bunch of peripherals. Similarly, we took the platform to demonstrate that it actually works. We took the platform and we, we, we actually built a chip. You see that on the right. That's the Freedom Unleashed 540 or the FU 540. Comes in a flip chip BGA package and it's also manufactured in TSMC 28. We put together Hi5 Unleashed, which is the world's first multi-core RISC-5 Linux development board, which features the FU 540. It has eight, comes with eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory with ECC. Gigabit Ethernet port, Spy Flash, micro SD card, and also micro USB for debugging and serial communications. Also has an FMC connector for future expansion, so if you want to connect to PCI or USB, there will be an expansion I.O. board with a Southbridge on it. The early access units for March has all been sold out. If you want it uh, at June, you can go order your own Hi5 Unleashed board at crowdsupply.com for $999. We have a bunch of software working on these platforms. Thanks, you, thanks to your support. RISC-V support for binutils, GCC, Newlib, GLIBC has all been upstreamed. RISC-V support for operating systems such as Zephyr, Linux, FreeBSD has all been upstreamed. RISC-V emulator ports for QMU has been upstreamed. 
However, there's still some missing pieces, which I'm asking for your help. Um, there's missing support for glibc 32-bit, also missing some Linux drivers. As a matter of fact, I have been uh, told today that there are more projects that have already been upstream. Um, this list is growing every day. And the RISC-V distribution ports are also in progress. Debian, Fedora, Open Embedded, OpenWRT, Gen2 are all in progress to have RISC-V support. As a matter of fact, there's a talk today at 3 p.m. about RISC-V Open Embedded by Kim Raj. So if you're interested, I urge you to go to his talk. And I have to do a quick shout out for everyone who's been helping us out. This has truly been a big effort. People at Sci-Fi, Berkeley, Red Hat, Blue Spec, Andes, thanks, thanks for your help. And we look forward to getting more help porting software to RISC-V. So I'm assuming by now you're all excited about RISC-V. So where, how do you get started? So we're super excited to have you experience RISC-V at this, at this conference today, tomorrow, and the day after. So we brought a bunch of HiFi One boards and HiFi Unleashed boards, and we're going to throw a RISC-V hackathon. So it, it's going throughout the entire three days of the conference. It's at the 23rd floor of this hotel. It starts 10.30 a.m. every day. So after today, it's going to happen after all the keynote sessions this morning. So we have three challenges. Uh, and the, the prize for each challenge is you get to have a high five unleashed board and $2,000 of cash. I'm just going to point out that nobody has gotten in high five unleashed board because we, we haven't shipped it. So you'll be one of the first people to have the high five unleashed board today. So the three challenges uh, we have the first one is hi five one so turn hi five one board into a USB mass storage that you connect to your, to your computer. Um, so you will have to port the USB 1.1 stack using GPIOs, and you'll be able to mount the flash on the board to your, to your computer. The person who gets the highest speed writing and reading a single one megabyte block will, will win. The hi five Unleashed challenge is to port a web browser to RISC-5, and the person who achieves the highest score running the Jetstream 1.1 browser benchmark will win. And the third category is to just come up with the coolest demo, so, and we'll, which will be voted by the sci five crew. So obviously, you don't need to come stay all day long at the High Five Hackathon. You can you know, pop in and out. Um, if you're also interested in just, just experience RISC-V, you can stop by um, to, to play around with the board. There's also BOF, BOF tables. RISC-V Zephyr and RISC-V Linux drivers will be discussed at the 23rd floor, so um, please come. So for those who can't wait to go hack on the hardware, I have some good news for you. We've also open sourced the Freedom Platform. So that means you can take the RISC-V Rocket CPU, which is open source, Tilink, the coherent chip interconnect, low speed peripherals, high speed Tilink's peripheral wrappers for DDR PCIe, and map that onto your own FPGA. So you can see on the top, that's the Freedom Everywhere platform mapped onto an FPGA. On the bottom, that's the Freedom Unleashed platform mapped onto an FPGA with some PCI cards. You can see Doom is also working on that. Unfortunately, there's some third-party IPs that, that has to keep closed source because of NDA reasons. You can get access to those by using the Sci-5 chip design services, however. So if you're interested, check out dev.sci5.com or Sci-5's GitHub organization or Free Chips GitHub organization. So to conclude, please join the RISC-V revolution. Open source has revolutionized software. Now it is hardware's turn. For software developers, thanks to your help, the RISC-V software ecosystem has been growing rapidly. So continue your work, help porting your favorite software projects to RISC-V. For system designers, I'm here to tell you that now you can afford a custom chip just built for your application. So start customizing Sci-Fi Freedom Platform and innovate at both the hardware and software level. So join us at the hackathon, BOF sessions, as well as our demo session. So this is multiplayer Quake 2 running on RISC-V connected to an x86 machine. So you're going to you know, run Quake on RISC-V, run Quake on Intel, and you're going to you know, shoot each other. So um, uh, as a startup, we're hiring rap, you know, aggressively too. So if you're uh, interested in you know, joining the next wave, um, and also um, visit sci5.com for more information. Thank you very much.